Hi, I'm Mimi Chan. Welcome to Culture Chat. Thanks for joining the conversation. Hi, Oscar. Hi, Mimi. (laughs) Well, this is pretty cool because we are on both Culture Chat Podcast, which is my audio, as you know, podcast. We're also on um, our YouTube channel. And for those that follow us on Facebook Live, this is going to be a 40 Fit Foo Extended Edition. It's very exciting. (laughs) I can feel your excitement, so it's making me more excited. (laughs) So for my listeners that have never logged on to our Facebook Live, it's basically every Tuesday at 7.30, where 7 30 p.m eastern standard time where um basically they log in and watch us for about 15 to 20 minutes ramble about you know us being too old for this shit (laughs) yeah i think we decided to try to fight against these this um this uh is it dogma i don't know this like idea that as you get older you um don't progress you decline and so we wanted to show that we can continuously improve and what our thoughts or methods of doing that. Yeah. And so I think typically maybe this all occurred, you know, because somebody here, one of us turned 40 this year. And uh, that's actually when you go to the stores and you look around the shops, it's all this like over the hill type stuff. And there's like RIP, like you know, tombstone heads right. and things like that in terms of decor. And I think it's really interesting. And that's why we also coined it 40 Fit Foo. It's not because it's not for 50s or 60s or 70s or 80 right. demographic. It's just kind of like that that breaking point that I think, you know, societally we kind of look at as, okay, now you're over the hill. Everyone likes to say it's all downhill from there. And, and you and I kind of have a different philosophy on that. Right. I actually, I just heard recently that the human body is able to live up to 120. So technically, we're just at our, we're just one third of the way there. Yeah. We're not even at the halfway point right, yet. Right. So um, that's part of it, yes. And I think that we can, um, we can kind of go on this journey together and and realize that even if we have a little missteps here and there, that um, it's just learning. And how can we get better as right. we continue on? So for my um, podcast listeners that are listening to this and have never seen our Facebook uh, 40 Fit Food Live, basically, you know, our first episode, we kind of delved into why we do this and we kind of just covered that. And then we covered kind of different little snippets of um, uh, subjects each week. And in this episode, I'm hoping to go a little bit more in depth, especially on the two popular episodes. And they all kind of overlap anyway. They like do. We talked yep. about recovery and injury. We talked about nutrition. We talked about uh, flexibility and mobility. Uh, what else did we talk about? Strength, which was, you know, your area of expertise, <laughs> of course. No, the, the word strength saying it as strumpf. That's what I said. <laughs> strumpf. Yeah. <laughs> so let's kind of like go through uh, each of those and kind of go a little bit more in detail because those that, you know, do tune in on Facebook Live might find this a little more interesting. We also, I'm going to try to look at some of our listener questions and go a little more in depth. But basically, let's kind of like meld it all into one. We don't have to go point by point because like we said, you know, like for example, warming up and recovery and all of that kind of all kind of can go together. You know, like we talked about how much longer it takes for us to warm up now than it did <clears throat> like 20 years ago per se. I mean, I started even like longer than that, like 38 years ago. So it definitely didn't take me very long when I was um, two years old to <laughs> warm up. <laughs> and as you can see from like we teach Kung Fu kids, they don't really need the quote unquote warm up portion of the class for warming up. We use those basics in the first 30 minutes of Kung Fu as their foundation and kind of their disciplinary focus kind of um, you know, just to give them foundation. But for adults, that 30 minutes is an actual warm up. Right. You know, so there's or kind a of a difference. Or a workout, right? So there is kind of a difference as we have um, gone into our over the 40 mark or around that mark. So um, maybe you can kind of talk about like the warm up part and how the recovery part and how that kind of has changed and like what we can do to kind of make sure that we are optimizing ourselves <laughs> in those two regards. Well, Yes, it takes a little bit longer to warm up, but if you think back why kids don't have to warm up, not only is it the youth, but usually, usually, maybe not as much anymore, but kids would be always moving around. 
So they would go from one state of moving around to then come to Kung Fu, it's another state of moving around. Um, and um, more and more, they're not that way, right? They, they actually need to a little bit more. Um, and then for adults, it's even more so. We spend um, uh, our time driving to work, sitting down, our time at work, sitting down, our time, our time driving home from work, sitting down. So there's a lot of time of, of not necessarily moving. And so those first 30 minutes of Kung Fu is a warm up. But my philosophy on that has um, kind of evolved a little bit as far as I think if you treat the entire day as your warm up, then you're not really don't have to warm up. And so what I mean is, you should wake up and do a little bit of moving around. Um, you know, I talk a lot about doing, um, taking your joints through their full range of motion as often as you can throughout the day. And so if you do, if you insert that throughout the day as often as possible, then when it's time for your Kung Fu class, you don't have to necessarily warm up as much. Yes, we do have to warm up as much if, if, if that, if we don't fit that into our day. But I find that if I do like my little nighttime mobility routine, if I wake which up and Which is also move, your recovery routine. Which is also the recovery routine morning time a uh, little bit of mobility throughout the day you know insert those little snippets of mobility then there are times where i have to kind of just jump into class and it doesn't require too much of a warm-up um, the times where where I, for me personally where i'm like man i need to warm up it's when it's been a, a long period of not doing anything physical of just sitting down coming from one meeting to another uh, on the computer for a long time and then you got to go take Kung Fu or teach Kung Fu class. That's what I'm like, I think I need a little bit more warm-up time. So, um, yeah, I think you, I think that's the main point is um, our body will adapt to the stress that we put on it. So if you put these little things throughout the day, then you won't need as much mobility. If you don't, then just target kind of like the big joints, your shoulders, your hips, your spine, you know, wrists and ankles and, and try to do the your whole body. Yeah. Yeah. Just target the major joints, which is your entire body. That's true. Very good point. <laughs> so I got to have a fun story to share with our audience and uh, you probably want to edit it out. But I remember now you just said, oh, you know, like throughout the day doing some mobility. There was a time, maybe it was like 20 years ago, where you're like, yeah, every hour I'm going to do push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There, there was a time where um, my, I loved, well, I guess I loved strength training and so um, there's a concept that uh, a strength uh, trainer named Pavel Satsulin uh, made famous which is called greasing the groove mm -hmm. and it's basically that you're greasing a movement you're, you're patterning a movement um, throughout the entire day so you took an example of a push-up and let's say that you can do 20 really good push-ups well then just kind of bring that down to five push-ups and then every, on the, every hour on the hour, do five push-ups. And then throughout the entire day, you end up doing a ton more than 20 push-ups. And there was a time that I built up to like 50 push-ups on the hour. And I was like, but, um, but yeah, but you, you know. You were like this. And, it, and I was if a little you guys bit more are muscular. just listening on the podcast, you can like quickly go to our YouTube and this will play at the same time. You could see, you know, Oscar had these muscles. Not, I had, not anymore. <laughs> but, but, um, but that led to a little bit of imbalance because I only did push up. Now my priority is, as I keep saying, taking my joints through their full range of motion. And so, you know, just doing this, um, while it did give me like a, a bigger chest and it, and I, and it gave, it made me feel good about myself when Fit I, your shirt's really yeah, tight. When you put on your shirt and you're like, Oh my, um, didn't necessarily make me feel good when I had to like lift my arms up <laughs> overhead. Like for um, Kung Fu, where yeah. you have full range of motion, like right. behind what's, uh, an, I guess, an average range of motion, would you well, say Kung Fu takes you through a little bit I think more? it just takes, it just, it demands that a lot of times you put your joint through its full range of motion. And so the reason why you want to, if um, you can imagine me making a big arm circle all the way around, um, the reason why you want to do that is not because you have to do it every single time, but there will be a point when you have to do it. And if you never put your arm in that position, then when you ask it to do and it, then an injury will happen or a snag or an impingement or so, something is going to happen, which your body's going to, will have adapted to not doing that and say, well, we don't know what the hell we're doing anymore in that position, right? We don't feel confident in that position. Why are you doing this to us? Why and, are you doing this to <laughs> And us? then what that leads to is shoulder pain or neck pain. It'll present in other things and, and then we um, instinctively will say, well, I'm getting older. And the truth is, no, it's just you didn't do the right type of training. And but so, wouldn't, wouldn't you say that for sure? Um, is it really the older thing or is it like you said, the not moving? Because now we're looking at, let's say, kids, right, who, like you said, aren't moving as much. So do they really need as much or is it because their tissue and their muscles are younger that 
they do need less warm up. Like, like I, is it I really so. the moving around all day thing, or or, or I think is it's it a little bit of both. Being a little bit older does kind of make it more challenging. Well, I think it's a little bit of both. So if you have for you know if you take a ten year old, even if they don't move that much, they're only nine years away from a ton of movement to learn how to walk. Hmm. We're okay. you know then. You so take maybe, us, we're maybe closer to 39 years away from doing that, right? Yeah. Um, or take someone like me who wasn't really into a lot of mo moving around as a kid. Um, uh, I was just, you know, a bookworm, right? Um, the, the further you get away from what we were designed to do, like the reason we have a brain is to move. And the only way that we can in, engage with our environment is by moving. And so the, the less we do of that, the body is just going to adapt to it. So... Yes, as you get older, some things get more challenging, right? But I think part of it is because we've got it in our head, to, well, we're older, so I need to slow down. And I don't think that's necessarily the case. I just think um, we have to approach it a little bit more, with a little more thought behind it, I guess. So I did want to bring something up that you just mentioned that sparked kind of a, a memory for me because we just recently took on some interns for your Control Your Health program yep. and with that we're educating them on mm -hmm. all these different methods and all these different principles and everything and you kind of just talked about well we're 39 years old we're 39 years away from moving that repetitive you know right. where we were moving around and they're only maybe nine years away at 10 can you maybe talk about because i always find it really fascinating that whole like uh you have a really fancy neurodevelopmental term. sequence or something oh, yeah, oh, yeah very fancy mm -hmm. term i'm like you know the baby movements you know what i just realized is every time i step up on this chair it shows my knee i am wearing shorts though <laughs> so I think that's I think it's important to kind of let people know that. <laughs> Do you want to stand up for camera? No. So those of you on our YouTube just, channel, <laughs> um, Oscar is wearing shorts, uh, and then those of you on the podcast that's listening is probably just thinking, what the heck are they talking yeah. about? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so, question was about the neurodevelopmental sequence. Neurodevelopmental sequence, yes. I did mention recently when I talked to interns that. Um, Whenever you're speaking to people who aren't in the fitness industry and you're t trying to explain to them that you're a little bit, that you kind of know what you're doing, that maybe 10% um, of scientific, you know, jargon is good, maybe 10, 15%. After that, then you start looking kind of douchey. So, <laughs> well, I, am, uh, I really hit the 2% the mark, so I'm not in any, no, yeah, I'm, I'm the reverse. No I kind of look a little bit more no. like incompetent or uh, uneducated, have you? Like, so, okay, so in it. Basically, right, we, we, we're born. And the first thing that, that we start doing is we start looking around and we, our hands are reaching for things, right? Um, and that's because t that's how we interact with our environment, by touch, by look, and of course then by taste, right? Which is why babies want to put things in their mouth all the time, right? Then we're, we're, we're um, uh, you don't immediately put a child on its belly, right? You always kind of lay it on its back first, right? And, the fir and what starts happening is thousands of repetitions of looking, side to side and then eventually the head starts moving then eventually the, the child gets a little bit of, of of connection with that movement and their their reflexive core turns on and they're able to then flip over side to side and so that would be like turning like over. turning over mm -hmm. and then they're rocking right mm -hmm. you can imagine a baby rocking like and, right before they're about to crawl right, they're kind they're of rocking. in that like a baby pounce mode they're not they're not able to move yet but they're crawling they're crawl they're, they're rocking then they start crawling and then they start um, working their way up to like a half kneel position. Then with assistance, they stand up, then they start walking, then eventually running. But each step of that is thousands and thousands of repetitions. Basically the only job that that child has is to move all day in that, in that way. Well, and then to get fed and then to shit, right? And to, <laughs> and to hopefully get his butt wiped. But, but, um, but that's basically its only job, right? And so that is what we were evolved to do is to move and then and then as kids, they learn how to play and all this other stuff. And then um, adults would be hunters and gatherers, right? And we've moved away from that, which is not wrong because, look, we have everything that's awesome in life. Yeah, right? there's like iPhones, electricity, electricity and, uh... um, water, you know, like, like <laughs> a, amazing, amazing things like that. But we have to realize that um, this, the way that we live is not the way we evolved to do. So we have to make adjustments in order to counteract that. 
Um, but um, that neurodevelopmental sequence is also how you can train someone strength training wise and you can take that as a system of how to progress people from um, your whole body being on the floor on your back you have a ton of bases of support to do some kind of strength training to half kneeling to standing to on one leg to running so that's I'm, a big tangent though. that's okay mm -hmm. I mean that's what we're, we're here to do <laughs> we're here to tangent because in our in our 40 fit food live we're like all right we got to wrap this up mostly because I think it's usually around our dinner time and we're rushing to dinner Right. Well, now and now we're, I'm fed, so yeah, we can yeah. talk so as long as, as you want. This is why I was smart <laughs> this time. I said, all right, we're going to do a podcast and it's going to be post meal. So uh, I think if we were live right now, we would get some parent questions because I've had this before where they, you know, it's not that people like to argue with us, but, you know, they just like to ask questions. They're inquisitive. Inquisitive. They're inquisitive and they care. Uh, but they do say, oh, well, my baby skipped steps. They never. Um, I don't know. They ran before they walked, no, they or didn't. they, <laughs> or they, or they were they were furniture climbing, and they couldn't even crawl yet. They were trying to stand before they crawled. I mean, there a lot of parents like to say okay, their babies let, skip steps. So, what do you say to them? Or like, I mean, how do you explain that? So we're, they we're can, we got to tread lightly because we don't have children. But we, we, we work but with we work a lot, lot of children, I think and it's we been do, um, we, we we vlogged a lot of hours. What is it like ten thousand hours to be kind of a master of something? Not that we would say we'd master. Uh, um, raising, parenting. parenting or raising children, but I mean, we're probably pretty close to that 10,000 hour mark. <laughs> Just kidding. So no, but seriously, like, like, and then there's also the stuff like, oh, you should never put your baby in those walker things that make them like walk faster. And I do definitely agree with that. Do not do that. Okay. So I'd like you to kind of address some of those things as controversial as it may be. No, I think no, the con that's not the controversial. The controversy is that, that I was going to say was that most parents think their kids are really special and they're not, they're just a, they're just a normal kid. <laughs> that's what the, what well, I said, we need to tread lightly. I was like, well, that's the all children are special. So right, so <laughs> it, it like negates it, right? So if you say all children are special, then really no children are special. Well, my, so we're child, still right. my child is special because dot, dot, dot. And, you're, and, and then our, we usually say, oh, well, that's awesome. Great. You know, can't wait to, to have them train. And then, but really it's like, well, Okay, that's it. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get anybody angry. But um, we have pitchforks and yeah. torches outside the school. Um, so, okay. Um, First of all, do they actually and, skip stuff? I don't think so. Yeah, they really don't. I don't think so because maybe though they're like doing reps in their sleep. <laughs> exactly. Like, um, let's say they said they exactly. You're, Sometimes they say, oh, mine didn't crawl so much. They just went to furniture pulling, where means, which, which yeah. means they're trying to stand. How, how often did they have their eyes on that kid probably rocking and maybe taking a couple of steps crawling? Or if they're in a crib, maybe they're crawling around in that freaking crib a ton, right? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Go back and pattern and look <laughs> at the sheets. Are they really warm? But um, I, don't, I don't think you can really skip a step because um, it's, like, it's like building a house, right? And if you take one step off, you can't build okay. to the next step. That's just my opinion. You know, I, I just don't see that happening. The other thing is um, you really shouldn't put your child in one of those like jump. I don't know. What, what are those things? Called? I think they're called walkers, like the ones that are on wheels. Right. Because. But also the bouncy one where they just sit in it and they're, they're not moving forward or back. Mm. They're just bouncing up and down. Those are, I think those are bouncers. Okay. Yeah. I, my, my baby um, apparatus vocabulary is not so strong so but Neither the walkers not. we're talking about are the ones where they sit in it and they, and they can touch the floor and it's and got then, wheels it, on it and it's got wheels and so they could just kind of be all over the house yeah i would equate that to um i would equate that to maybe trying to to always doing um 300 pounds on the smith on, on a, an assisted machine that helps you press and then Never doing that, but then saying, here's 150 pounds on each arm and trying to press it. You know what I mean? Like, you, you need to build the stability. Like, ch so it children... A, does it give them a false sense of, cap of their body, a false sense I, of... I don't know what if it's a they're... false sense, but it, you're, you're missing out steps. So, like, like um, ch we're born into this world with an infinite amount of mobility, and we have to earn our stability. So, if you skip steps to earn your stability, you're... I mean, you're not crippling the child, right? That, that's too strong of a word. But like, let's say, for example, um, let's take, for example, the, the one that where you walk, right? The little, the thing that helps you walk. Well, in order for us to even step and walk, our reflexive core has to fire. If you, if the ch child doesn't have to build that, then 
you're building a weaker human. If you have them on those jumpers where they're always on their tippy toes, and probably even for the walkers as well, where they're, they're learning to walk kind of like on their toes. Almost forward. Yeah, they're not getting, they're not training their toes to get full dorsiflexion, to like flex completely and their ankles to move completely. And then um, maybe it takes 20 years to show, but then this person has really stiff ankles and eventually it's like, wow, they've got really bad knee problems. Well, you look back and it's like their toes don't flex. They're, you know what I mean? It's like, a, a, it can lead to a cascade of problems. So, um, and, and again, I, I keep going back to the evolutionary perspective. These things weren't around right. to, for that. They're there as a, as a way to, for us to kind of keep our keep kids away from sharp objects or something or allow them to move around. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't know what it, they're for. But, but, um, but uh, I, don't, I don't think it's helping them is right, what I'm right, saying. Right. Does yeah, because of course it makes sense to me because mm -hmm. I agree with you, but I'm just, you know, for our listeners, I'd well, like you to kind of explain And I, I remember someone, a parent once saying, well, I mean, but look at the size of her calves I'm, or of this kid's calves by being on that bouncer. And I'm like, yeah, I'm jealous of the kid's calves because I have small calves, but I'm not going to be jealous of the kid having a very stiff ankle <laughs> and not being able to walk right or walking pigeon toe. Because is there like or, a bow-legged thing? Yeah, like I mean, thing and, and, can happen? right. And, I, and it, the thing is, again, to take it back to the joints going through their full range of motion, your toes should and feet should function kind of how your hands function. Mm -hmm. If you look at an infant, they really can splay out all their toes. Yeah, like a they monkey. They look like little little fingers the right. way they move. And um, and then as soon as you the the I think that the problem or the challenge is as soon as possible, parents are saying, well, let's put this child in a contained thing, a walker, and then we're going to put them in school and we're going to put them in a chair. So try to skip that for as long as possible. That's what I think. I'm um, running around. Yeah, because now at almost 40, I'm trying to do as much movement as possible, like a baby would. <laughs> Crawl around, move my joints around. You know, like sp I'm working on my toes, trying to move them. Um, so. And now you work with a lot of 40 plus. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's probably, I would say, the core of, of who you work 40 with. 40 plus, yes. And a lot of them do want to do kung fu or running or another sport or cross training. I mean, our 40 Fit Fu podcast, of course, is about training specifically for kung fu. But I mean, in generally speaking, would you say um, on average, we're not where we would like evolution, or I guess the word is, are we as optimal as we could be? I don't think so. Even you and I, who do this full full time, are not as optimal as we could be. But but that's not realistic, also, got, right? Yeah. Like we can't just spend twenty hours of the day priming our body to be in peak condition. Because I mean, we have to work. We have to say. I mean, my job is teaching kung fu, but a high percentage, over fifty percent of the time, I have to be on the computer yep. because I'm running the Wallum system and I am communicating with other schools. And I'm, you know, so even my life, which one would think, oh, I just get to be in the temple training all day. It's not really that realistic, right? right? So how do we find that balance? And I think just like anything else is you take accountability. So, you know, I used to, I, I would always say when someone looks at the control your health thing, oh, control your health, control really starts with self-awareness. And a real big part of the self-awareness is realizing all those things that I said earlier, like we're not kind of meant to do this, but we have to do it but we choose to do it. No one's like forcing you to be on that computer, right? It's something that you have to do for work, but no one's forcing you to do it. So the first part is for you to say, or for any one of us to say is, is this is part of what I have to do and I am choosing to do this. And because of that, then this, then maybe I'm not as mobile as I want to be, but I chose to do it. Like, I, I think that's a, a big part of it because the one thing that I, not that I can't, I don't want pet to say peeve. I can't stand. A little pet peeve of mine is just people who complain about stuff all the time and, and they're complaining about everything else that's outside of them. And even I have caught myself doing that, Yeah. right? Um, so if the first thing you can say is, well, I'm the one who decided to do these things and the reason this is happening is because of these choices that I made, then it makes it a lot easier then for you to either um, take little slivers of time to do other stuff, right? Um, but also be content and say, well, I'm okay with that, right? Like every time that I eat ice cream, I jokingly say, trust me, I'm a, I'm a professional. I'm a fitness <laughs> I know, professional. I'm a fitness professional, I know what I do that, and give me some pancakes next, right? That's a, jokingly, but I'm just saying, I'm choosing to do that. Right. This morning we had these awesome pancakes, right? Um, for breakfast, and uh, in the middle of the day, I felt kind of crappy. I needed to almost take a nap, right? 
And those but, were actually pretty good pancakes. And they're good, high quality all pancakes, from right? Scratch with all. But I didn't have any vegetables. I didn't really have any protein, right? right. Um, I didn't probably drink enough water. The, the whole thing. Um, but I'm perfectly okay with that because, percentage-wise, that's like. 10% of the time I eat that way, Not 85 to 90% of the time I and eat pretty well. it was tasty. And frick, man, I, freak, I just love pancakes, <laughs> damn it. And, and the thing is, so that, you can take it towards anything else, right? Yeah. You're choosing to do the things that you, that you want to do. Right. Like, so, hey, listen, we don't have kids, we chose that. If you have kids and you're blaming your kids, I'm assuming you chose to have those children. No one forced you to have them. Right? <laughs> so, so um, uh, the that job- That stork the, drops them yeah, off. Stork. It's the job you have, stork. right? You chose to have that job, I'm assuming. Um, and if, you're, if your mentality is like, no, I, didn't ha I have to have this job, this, I think you need to change your mindset. A yeah, bit. yeah. I, this, this goes back to you and I, like we're constantly kind of checking and balancing each other and we always go, okay, like when we want to complain, because we all complain, it's part of life, it's part of like, oh, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but we've really made that conscious effort, like even if I'm having probably the worst day ever and I'm at the school and someone's like, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm awesome. Well, how, how could I complain about my life? It's so good. Right. You know, I kind of go, I always, I always do this like perspective thing and I'm like, I could have been born in like, Rwanda while like genocide was yep. going on and yep. you know I just and then I know it sounds like well that's so unrealistic I'm like but it's not because some people are actually born there while that's going on so but I think like you said kind of checking each other and then um, we always recommend this the book um, extreme ownership extreme ownership is a game changer for me yeah um, and me as well and yeah. you know it's you know Mike Boyle recommends it so right. many people that I've talked to on my podcast have recommended it and I was very excited by the way to tell them that I actually have read that book so we do really recommend that for those of you out there that you know do you get really frustrated it's not that you're not um, rightfully frustrated or upset or like feel like there's so much going on but like if you do kind of want to really not be unhappy, changing your mindset's probably well, one of the best things that you could probably do towards yeah. that. And it's all on you to do it first. Yeah. You, the, and the thing about it, even if you can do it by yourself, it still has to start with you and then you can go and ask for, for help. But if, you, <laughs> if all you do is complain, then, then that's a serious problem. Jocko Willink, who wrote that book, also has an awesome podcast. And for me, what I like about it is, is there's a lot of repetition. There's a lot of saying the same stuff over and over again. And if you are the type of person that maybe has a little bit of negativity in their life, then you need to take as much time as you, as you can to just input positive stuff into your, into your head. And uh, one of the things that he, that he says on there um, is, uh, oh, something bad just happened. His response is always like, oh, good. Something good just happened. Oh, good. Like he says good to anything. If it's negative, oh, good. We're going to learn from that. Oh, it was positive. Oh, good. We, we did the right thing. So um, Extreme Ownership and also the Jocko Podcast, th those, two, those two together, um, if you're in a funk, he'll smack you out of it because <laughs> literally that's what I think that, that he does. Yeah, because he's also got that, um, was he a Navy SEAL? No. He was Navy SEAL. Navy SEAL, like, yeah, belt, let's just, like, just suck it up and move on. And he probably belongs in like Conan's era, Yeah, yeah, I think. yeah but, we um, all need a little bit of that sometimes. It though. can be much for some people. I think... Yeah. Um, uh, there's uh, people that, that I've recommended it to and it's like, okay, enough. They've, they've got enough of it. Yeah, because you don't actually have to listen or hear the whole thing. It's just sometimes you need like small reminders. And then on the flip side, the, you know, namaste, like relaxed mm -hmm. zen side, um, something we talked about in 40 Fit Foo was for the recovery and for the warm up and for all of it, all of it together was meditation. Yep. And it seems like it's this buzzword now, like so many people are into mm -hmm. meditation, but obviously it goes back way, way back, you know, yep. so many people um, have benefited from it in the past. And I think people also have this misconception of what that is. Like, well, I can't meditate. I don't have 45 minutes of the day. Meditation could be like a minute. It could be like 30 seconds. Yep. I mean, ideally, you know, you want as long as possible to kind of find that, you know, place where you can, you've calmed down or you, you, you are able to kind of reset. Um, and meditation, I think, also means a lot of different things for different people. Some people, literally, it's like where you get in Lotus, you, you, put, you put the music on, or you don't, or you have breathing, or you have guided meditation. There's so many options, but I have found it to be a game changer for me as well. So I like, like, the Jocko in your face, like, punching me in my face but, sometimes to remind me, but I also kind yeah. of like having that, um, kind of the yang, the yin side, the yin and yang. And also, listen, moving around can be meditation. You know, mm -hmm. your mom, who's a Tai Chi instructor, always talks about Tai Chi being moving, meditation in motion. Mm -hmm. um, and then 
Another thing about meditation that I think has been beneficial is not thinking all the time that it's something that I'm doing just for me, but um, sometimes, um, and I've heard you doing some meditations of these as well, like listening to them where it's like you're trying to think of someone else. And so that's like a really good lesson in life in general, right? If you're feeling down on yourself, then try to help someone else. And even in meditation, if it's like one of these things where you're breathing and you're focusing on your breath and you're being present and you're doing all these things, but you're not necessarily doing it, oh, I'm just doing it for me. I'm going to also now think about something positive about someone else, right? I think that's another great way that it benefits you. But um, the word meditation, sometimes people think of it as rest. And I think um, for busy professionals or type A personalities, maybe they can think of it as recovery, right? In the same way that we've got to recharge our batteries on our phones, um, um, it can be just a, a method of recovery that'll help you perform better. Yeah, and you I don't mean, need a lot of time. And there's a ton of books out on that. Obviously, yeah. you, you just know, gotta one find of the, what works. You got to find which one works for you. I know that you know I liked Enlightenment Now by Stephen Pinker, something I just read, and I know. Um, a previous podcast guest that I had, uh, you know, Brendan Rurick, we talked about that. But also there was the the news anchor that talked oh, about 10 how... 10% happier. 10% yeah. happier and how, like, a lot of people have told me that has Paris, made a big difference because they basically shared their whole emotional, mental, and stress breakdown and, and why, like, it was a game changer. So I do urge everybody to kind of give it a try, you know, and find the one that works for you. There's, like, thousands of apps. There's thousands yep. of guided things out there. And... And um, make it your own. And if you have discovered some brand new uh, meditation technique, please like hit us up, let us know. We really like to hear about it. But um, that also plays into what we talked about. As we get older, we need more of that, maybe because we are more bombarded. You know, when I was 20 and 10, and you know, I didn't have as many bills, or I didn't have the stressors in life, those outside factors that kind of cause us to get bombarded. So you know, coming back around to 40 fit foo, that's total like recovery and warm up. Like yep. it's all kind of in one, like that moving around, that meditation, the mindfulness, um, which is kind of what you were talking about mm -hmm. in terms of like kind of knowing um, where we're at. So, but in terms of our physical stuff, like we talked about injury and now we've also talked about, you know, s flexibility, mobility and strength. And I think those two things actual equal like the, or can help prevent injury yeah. and then once you're injured you have to use that mobility and strength to kind of come out right. of injury so i think those three um episodes that we did can kind of be addressed right now we can kind of go a little deeper um down that rabbit hole because <laughs> on our on our on our 40 fit food live we're always like well that's another rabbit hole yeah, we can yeah. go we can go on a tangent but this is the time to do it so how how uh, we did have a lot of people share like, oh, I had an ACL tear or I had this and it's taken me forever to recover. It, I mean, I remember when I was younger and I'd sprained my ankle, it was fine. And on our 40 Fit Foo, you had talked about like kind of an ankle sprain and, you know, maybe you can kind of go in a little bit more detail here um, since you get so excited about injuries. <laughs> I, I, I don't get it super excited about them, but, but I think the, like an analogy that we use for ankle sprains was the number one cause of an ankle sprain is a previous ankle sprain. So, um, and the reason that we get injured is because the tissues are, are not prepared for the force that's being put onto them. So your uh, recovery routine, mobility, training, whatever, can not only be for recovery, can not only be for warm up, like the, how I said, the all day kind of movement inputs, um, but it can also be your prehab to prepare yourself to not get injured. It can be your rehab or, uh, as a way to recover from, from an injury. Um, and it can be even strength training as well if you do it the right way by um, loading that tissue isometrically, like isometric contractions, which means you're just kind of, like if both of my hands are pushing against each other and I'm trying to drive each one into each other but neither is moving, that's an isometric contraction, which if I do it intensely can also be strength training. Um, and so if you put these uh, demands on your joints, then you can be doing all of the, everything at once. You can be, do, it can be your mobility training, it can be your recovery, it can be your strength training. So that is a way to kind of um, um, put a lot of things together or, or we, we call them like big bang for your buck type of things to do, which have multiple, uh, multiple uses, right? So what do you often see most in terms of why people actually get injured? So you said previous injury is a big one. Previous injury is, is, is a big one, but even before that, so 
previous injury and then the, the reason probably that that original injury happened is just not moving correctly and not only not moving correctly combined with putting putting your body in a position that it wasn't prepared for, that it's not adapted for. Because in the past I used to think, and if you remember, I'd be like, well, the way this person's doing this is not right, they're gonna hurt themselves. But it's not because, they're not gonna hurt themselves because they're doing a certain move, they're gonna hurt themselves because they're doing a certain move that they're not prepared for. So um, again, that, that philosophy of mine, or my thought process on that, a lot of it through um, this guy, Andrew Ospina, has changed with, because of that, because you should train every movement. Any movement that you want to do, you should train it, right? It's not, it shouldn't be, you shouldn't limit yourself and say, well, I can't do that because um, it's not good for my ankle. It's more of like, well, is that something that your body needs you to do? Then go ahead and train that, but the right way progressively, load that tissue, apply force to the tissue safely, um, and then you're gonna be able to move into, mo you're gonna be able to do movements that people originally would be like, well, that's not right, quote unquote. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the, yeah. A, a good example is basically we always use is my father, mm -hmm. who people go, oh, it's wrong to move that way because right. your knee shouldn't be in that angle and da da da. And I'm like, well, he's been moving that way for 80 years and he continues to do it daily. Yep. And so his body's prepared for it. Right. And so in the so past, so like he squats a lot, for example. Well, and he does what we call a butterfly horse dance, which is kind of like uh, it's a it's a in, this big internal rotation of the hips, right? And your and your 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 feet are splayed out. Um, and in the past, originally, I used to say, well, the reason he's able to do that is because he's never not done it, right? Um, but you shouldn't do that. And now my thought is, the reason he's able to do that is because he's never not done that. If you want to do that, you're going to have to train to, to do it, and it's not going to be easy. And I doubt that you're going to be willing to put in the work to do it, <laughs> but it is possible. Right. I just don't think you're willing to put in the work. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm just really upfront with it because... Um, uh, my mobility has improved a lot as I've gotten older, yeah. but I still haven't put in enough work to get to where maybe I thought I wanted to be at. And, and it goes back to, again, well, I didn't put in that work, so I can't really complain about it. Yeah, the reason <laughs> I don't have a six-pack isn't because I haven't put in the it, it, It's because I like pancakes, too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, one time my cousin hugged me around the side, and she grabbed a little bit of like extra meat here on the side, and she's like, oh, I'm surprised that you got a little something there. Um, and I'm pretty lean, right? And I looked yeah, at her, you're and, very uh, lean. Well, no, and, <laughs> It's kind of annoying but, how and, mean you are. And I looked at her and I said, yeah, but uh, I enjoy eating cookies. <laughs> you know what I, mean? <laughs> I put in a lot of work. And it's not that I eat a lot of cookies. I'm just saying I'm not going to like completely not eat anything, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> I make look, a decision. To, to, to look a certain way. There's a price. There's a, a price way. you got to pay. Yeah, there, there's a price. And so for everybody, no matter how old you are, it's definitely finding that balance and not like being upset about it if you don't have the six pack abs or the, you know, all the statistics that you want when you get on the scale and all of those things. It's kind of like taking accountability, which goes back to our extreme ownership. Well, what have I done to not deserve right. those numbers, that, that, right? Like I, I don't ever like, well, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna say that. I have definitely wanted to take my scale and throw it out the window and curse it and tell it that it's a liar and that <laughs> I don't know why it hates me, but that's my like emotional um, side that just but maybe that's of, just a way to vent, right? Yeah, I don't really it. mean it. In all honesty, I, I usually don't get upset at any like, you know, what do you call it, entity out there. Like there's this this greater force that's against me, right? It's not that. It's because, you know, I don't. I'm, I'm working and I'm choosing to do that work instead of choosing to hit the gym and do more strength training. And then I'm choosing to you know, make pancakes this morning and, and, I them, loved and it. that's completely okay. And, and that's why yeah. I'm okay. It's taken me 40 years, but I'm finally kind of okay with how I feel, look, move. Like I know I'm exactly where I should be because it's what I've done to get there. Exactly. Where, where you're at right now is an accumulation of all the choices you've made up, up until that point. And we could either complain about it or say, well, I wasn't genetically gifted to, to have the body of Mike Tyson or, or I don't know. I don't know why I just thought of that, that guy. But, but a lot of people um, maybe can curse their genetics. But the thing is, that does have a lot to do with how your body is structured and of all course. that. But just accept it. I mean, you can't change it. <laughs> you have to right. accept that. But there's a ton of stuff that you can do to move yourself to become a better version of yourself. Um, um, as far as the scale and stuff like that. I like to get on the scale just because I know my certain weight that I'm comfortable at. And, um, and I like to see kind of sometimes, am I dehydrated? Like it's, it's never a judgment of like, oh, I ate too much. It's just more of like, 
usually for me it has to do with, well, what did I do this, this day? And, and it's a way for me to kind of um, to recall the, the actions that I took that day with no judgment. I try, I try to do it with no judgment. The, 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 the mean way to do it when someone has a com complaints is like, well, you do this to yourself, you, <laughs> right? <laughs> but the nicer way is to try to maybe get a little bit curious and say, well, tell me about like, what's been going on and let them just try to decide on their own. But since we're not talking to anyone face to face right now, I would just say, look at yourself. You are, you are, <laughs> the, the reason you are the way that you are right now is an accumulation of all the choices of your life up to this point. And wherever you're at right now, that doesn't have to be the end of it. You can go in any direction that you want. Um, and us being at 40, we should probably look at um, where do we want to be at 50? Probably not even like where do I want to be next year. Like there's a ton of stuff that we can do which will not be seen next year or two years, but at 50, it'll, it'll pay off. And it's just consistency. Yeah, and you also said the cells in your body. Yeah, like the person that you are right over. now, seven years from now is gonna be, you're gonna be, the Mimi that you are right now, seven to 10 years from now, you will be, every single cell, every single part of you that is you right now will be different. And so you get to choose right now, we can choose right now, who do I wanna be in 10 years? Which is why I say, think about where you want to be when you're 50. Because the actions that we take now and the next years to come is going to determine that. The real cool thing too I, I just thought about with the weight stuff is your dad, <laughs> your dad has the perfect way to, to think about your weight and it was with our Kung Fu sash. Yes. And he's like, I know like when I tie it, oh my knot and it's this length, oh, I know exactly how that feels and if, if ever it's a little bit Less fabric than you <laughs> less, used, less fabric than less, you used to. Less length of the yeah, tie. <laughs> that's a great way that that we're, that I. That's another great way to be like. Oh, I think. Uh, no, the sash obviously shrunk in the wash. <laughs> yeah, right. I look at you. It's like, what do you do to my sash? You put it in too much heat. It's not. But uh, I just thought of that because he would always talk about about how when he ties his sash to do kung fu, he knows it's where so, he's at. Uh, he's such a fascinating person not just because of the whole amazing life story mm -hmm. that he's had but it's like he is this actually very uneducated he only went to like second grade you right. know like so he's definitely not in the percentage of worrying about being too scientific when he speaks you know whenever no. someone asks him well how do you do that he's like practice <laughs> how do you do the splits practice the splits you know it's right. such a simplification but he's such a cool person to look at as an example because he kind of always like naturally or instinctively i don't know how we want to put it but is doing what he needs to do to move feel and look how he wants to right be yeah he's you know? a he's an example of what we've been saying which is an accumulation of choices over a lifetime <laughs> yeah and that's where he's at right now and the cool thing is the body still will continue adapting, so he's going to be 80 years old. And if he keeps doing what he's doing, then 10 years from now when he's 90, you know, we all will eventually slow down a little bit, but he is putting in the work to diminish that. The, the, what, what would typically happen for, to, to him? Well, that's, that's already obvious. I mean, he's mm -hmm. not a typical 80 year old, right. period. Right. Like, he's actually not a typical 70 year old, or maybe even a 60 year old, I would say, because, no. you know, definitely like, are some of our He's students. like a very fit 40-year-old. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to aspire. Uh, yeah, he's, but then we, we like to chalk it off to make ourselves feel better by saying he's not exactly human. He must have some sort of like Wolverine recovery and some sort of like mutant. Well, I think also there's, the, there's a huge part of the mindset there where um, some people may look at it negatively, never admitting that you're wrong. <laughs> but if you're always feeling that you're doing the right stuff, and you won't be beat. And you won't be beat, right? Then, <laughs> then that's a that's a driver. For yeah, we can else. share a really fun story with our listeners. So when we were doing the cultural center, and we were um, basically we were going to um, move out a wall, and so we, we had to chip away some of the tile right. that was there because we had to relay it down. And so um, you know, I am not a handy person. I don't do any sorts of hammer, nails, mm. construction, or any of that. But you know, we're all in it, we're all over there. And so you just kind of had to chisel away the tile at a certain mm -hmm. angle. Like to me, it was like a technique thing, not like a power thing or whatever. And of course, my father's there chiseling, you're there chiseling. I think 
two was there chiseling and then I was like well I want to help I don't want to feel like I'm useless in this whole thing because you know I wanted to contribute and so I started to chisel and I got this like really great rhythm right. and like the angle was just right I wasn't putting that much effort and it was like kind of chipping away really fast and then um, you kind of got to see from from the a third uh, third party perspective of like what happened there basically your dad just said ha you can't beat me and he ran a guy like a machete or something i don't know what and he started like just hacking at it and he's going like, like a madman triple yeah, speed triple speed and um <laughs> but uh he literally like we jokingly say that he's always thinking well you can't beat me but he literally says you can't do that as good as me or something like that yeah, and yeah just he's got, like, you don't know yeah and um <laughs> and i remember saying hey it's not a competition <laughs> But, uh, but it, it is kind yeah. of like on a positive side of that winning mentality for life. Like, you're not going to let it beat you. You're not going to let age beat you. Mm -hmm. Ageism, you know, like he's really a cool example to look at. Um, just to really quickly um, address the injury thing one more time, I wanted to ask you, usually when you see someone that's quote unquote injured, they go, oh, I don't know what happened. I just stepped off the curb and then that was it my ankle my knee blew out or my ankle blew right. out like was it really that step or was that the straw yeah i think that's the straw that broke the camel's back so uh, th i heard an analogy of like we are all given this like buffer of movement and some people have a much bigger buffer than others but you will and is you that know, just love a, a buffer of like bad movement maybe it could be genetic yeah. genetic things like that but i i still think now this is just hypothetical my 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 thought on it that the buffer of movement that you get can be expanded on based on all the stuff that you do so if you were like an active child always moving around doing kung fu you know like doing all the all these things throughout the year then your buffer is going to continuously get bigger or denser however you want to think about it if you are always moving incorrectly and by incorrectly i mean you're putting your body in positions that you didn't train it to be and you do that repetitively then eventually it's like if you were to take a paper clip and just start you know, kind of going back and forth, back and forth, and eventually it's just going to snap. Mm -hmm. But, but that doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't do that. It just means that they didn't train to, to do that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, so uh, the biggest thing that we get is a lot of people with back injuries. Oh, my back just gave yeah. out. Well, the reason your back probably came out, gave out, is because it was bearing the load more than it should have. Maybe you were moving incorrectly as far as not loading your hips the right way. Um, you know, be having a really tight upper back. A lot, a lot of different things of repetitively doing it, not addressing that issue by strengthening the, the right types of tissues, by, by moving the right, the right uh, joints, whatnot. Um, and then you go to pick up a pillow and you blow out your back and your, your thought process again is, I don't know what I did. Why did this happen? Cruel world. Cruel world. But, and it's not your fault necessarily because if you aren't paying attention, it's going to be really hard for you to look back and go, you know, without help, sometimes you might need a little bit of guidance to say, well, let's take a look at all these things that you probably did to lead to this point. And it was that baby walker. <laughs> it was that damn baby walker. <laughs> um, um, yeah. And um, not that it's your fault necessarily, but it's not really anyone else's fault, right? <laughs> you can't like go blaming the world for it. It's just the way that th things happen. And, and because you didn't have information or lack of knowledge, does then not allow you, it doesn't give you the right then to start blaming other people. It's still, just because you don't have the knowledge and you're, and you're wrong, you can't blame other people. You're still wrong. You know what I mean? Um, so. so one thing we did also kind of touch on that a lot of people kind of commented on or had more questions on was that overtraining mentality. So now let's take the pop percentage of the population who's like us that we're like, no, no, we really want to train. We mm -hmm. want to get it right. We want to keep in shape. And so we do have some really avid active students and um clients of yours that like they they come in and they are dedicated and mm -hmm. a lot of people and um this is that whole like crossfit you know where they like that exhausted feeling right. at the end of a workout and and i think sometimes i like to give people that exhausted yep. feeling at the end of a workout too where it's like they want to feel like they accomplished something have you right like so sometimes in kung fu i have to do a training class where i'm like looking at the broadsword form and I'm like, all right, that's it. This is not going to be an exhaustive workout physically, but mentally I need these guys to start breaking this down because mm -hmm. it's starting to look like crap. Basically, right. Like I, I just kind of get into pet peeve mode like you and I'm like, all right, that's it. We're not going to just get to do a bunch more exercises or forms and go through stuff. We're just going to take the time to fix 
and break down the technique, maybe work on application or work on, you know, Mm -hmm. subtle differences that's going to really bring their form to a higher level, right? And so that doesn't leave them, like, panting Mm -hmm. or, you know, maybe even sweating. Well, it's Florida. We're always sweating. But, uh, but, you know, it doesn't leave them with that feeling like, oh, I just worked out. You know, usually because I'm, I'm doing this mostly in an advanced class, they're all mature enough to understand why we have to take time away from maybe that type of feeling to kind of address some of these things. But I think a lot of, especially in your industry with strength training, people have kind of like a opposing view of this. Like you should leave a workout completely taxed. Yeah. I, um, if you look at the priority for training in my studio or with what we do at Control Your Health, uh, number one, as I always say, is do no harm. It's just like a, a doctor. Do no harm. Cause no injury that shouldn't be happening at while you're training and then number two is then to prevent injury in their sport and i've always said sport for regular people is their life life is their sport so we want to uh, one not have them get injured while they're training with us and then two um, train them in a way so that that when they are doing the things that they love or that they that that their livelihood is all about that they don't get hurt picking up groceries or you know uh, being on a computer and getting carpal tunnel syndrome right um, and then after if those two things are met then we can talk about how can we excel in everything else so um, the problem with some training modalities is that they train very high skill um, and uh, physically demanding things during fatigue a fatigued state and so that can potentially lead to injury um, uh, I personally don't think that's the right way to do it, but it all comes down to what are your expectations. So if you're the type of person who goes to a gym, whatever it is, and you um, got injured doing it, but you still loved it, <laughs> and you can't wait to recover from that injury, and then go back and do it again and get injured again, but yet you still love it, and you still love the experience, who am I to judge? I can look at that person and kind of be like, that's an idiot, but I don't anymore. I'm just like, are they having a good time? Are they enjoying it? And, and um, the last thing I'll say about that is something that Dan John, a great strength coach, says is um, the fit comes from this Nordic word um, that means to be to knit, to be knitted together. And if you have six pack abs, but um, a hip replacement and your wife divorced you because you spent all your time in the gym, then I don't call that a fit person. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, so it's kind of like finding um, for yourself, what you define as a healthy overall life. Mm-hmm. So, okay, fair enough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and then we um, we also for our forty fit, you know, um, talked about nutrition, um, which is kind of a you know hot topic. Of course, everybody's got a new diet they're pitching, <laughs> and everyone's got a new. This is good for. One of the, my favorite videos that you shared, which I'll make sure that uh, gets linked in this blog post, is that uh, where the guy runs in and, he, and it's like 1970 oh, yeah. and they're like, wait, don't eat butter. It's bad for you. And then, and then he goes back in time and he, or you know, forward in time, he comes back, he goes, wait, eat margarine. And then he comes back, he's like, wait, you can't right. eat that. And then they're like, wait, don't eat eggs. Wait, don't eat the middle of the egg. Only eat the outside. Like, it's, there's... I guess because we are in a world where science proves things as we go, it's okay that things do get changed Mm -hmm. on you. Um, But are we supposed to feel really bad that all this time we were eating X, Y, Z, and then now it's like, no, you can't eat this and you can't eat that? Or I mean, what's what's the answer here? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what the answer is. I think we have to realize that um, the the news industry is standing like right outside wherever they make journals waiting for a new journal to come out to say dot 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 to say now cholesterol is bad now cholesterol is good now fat is bad now fat is good and they take that information and take the headline and because we um are those industries are are have to feed new information all the time they have to put a big headline and without really de- digging deep into the data. Um, and so that's why things get switched all the time. But whatever our ancestors, our grandparents, our parents probably told us, which is, um, you know, you need to sleep seven to nine hours a night, drink a lot of water, eat your vegetables, 
you know, uh, eat lean protein, <laughs> try not to eat processed stuff. No matter what diet people say, whatever the diet is, it's probably moving towards that direction of those rules, kind of a simple version of those rules. Um, and everything else is just made up shit. It's just like, well, I am on the paleo Chinese monk diet. I just created it and it's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> and then these are the rules that you have to do. And then they go by step by step by rule. But the reason why pe some people, if they follow certain things, get success, it usually has to do with them um, eating a little bit less processed food and probably eating a little bit less than what they're used to. Like realizing that um, uh, calorie wise, they're eating a little bit less calories than, they, than they, they used to. And if they do that consistently and they start losing weight and then it's like, I'm on keto, man, you know, and it's the greatest thing ever. Or what, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever the diet is. Well, you know. okay, so I, I'm with you there. It's just that it's frustrating because I think people out there, this is where the too much information is a danger. Like, you can find any supporting document or doctor or, so, so to speak, um, professional or reliable source to support your argument, right? Like just the other day, it was like someone from Harvard said, coconut oil is the worst thing for you ever, you know? And then there's a bunch of people and you read the comments and it's like, yeah, tell all the people who've been living hundreds and hundreds of years without heart disease or whatever in the, you But know. it's probably because people saw that coconut oil was good and they just ate way too much coconut oil, right? <laughs> right? Um, like just we jars just take, of yeah. it. And like, well, I can have extra oil because it's good oil. Like and it's also, still oil you're still getting fat. Also, we want confirmation over our biases, which you've talked about before. And that goes with anything, right? Nutrition, if you see a diet, if you like avocados and steak and butter, right? And red wine, and a diet comes out that says this is all you need to eat, right? You're gonna be like this, you're gonna, you're gonna find a way to, to, to reinforce to yourself, this is the right way to eat. Even if maybe you eat too much of that and then you still gain weight and you start not feeling well, you're still going to be like, well, I think I haven't really figured out exactly how to do it right, but I'm going to keep working on this diet. <laughs> um, so I think what I try to tell my clients to do when they first start is um, take a nutrition info um, vacation. Actually, take a health and fitness vacation, you know, like information vacation. Try not to look stuff up because what will happen is whenever we listen to something that's different from what we already thought, we're immediately going to want to go and research something to reinforce what we thought. And then you'll come back to me as your trainer and say, well, I read this. And the reason is, the reason why you went and read that is because you don't want to do the stuff that you really should be doing. <laughs> and um, so if you can take a little maybe... Uh, uh, information break and just try to follow and do something consistently, you probably will have more success that way. I mean, it, it is also really interesting because I think maybe the 80s started like a lot of the fad diets probably was probably one of, I mean, I'm not looking this up or anything, but like that's kind of when all the box stuff started to come out. Like there wasn't TV dinners before, there wasn't processed, you mm -hmm. know, the, the, the aisles in the supermarket weren't all in the middle like they are now, right. right? It was a lot more of like farmer market looking, you know, type of stores, markets. They were markets and now they're grocery stores, right. which are just like shelves and shelves and shelves. I mean, one of the big things is, you know, what we try to tell clients is, well, you know, if you just shop around the outside of the market where there's like the fresh fruits and veggies mm -hmm. and then you have a little bit of dairy, and whatever, and the proteins, mm -hmm. like it's kind of like that outside area. It's it's pretty intuitive, and I think deep, deep down, guys, all of us know what's not right. good for us. <laughs> and what yeah, we know, and um, and it goes back to what we said earlier: is like you just remember you made that choice, right? Like um, the ice cream sandwiches that are down the aisle, right? And you picking them and eating them, and saying, "Well, I only eat, I'm only eating the ice cream sandwiches once a night." Um, that will accumulate and add to, to something, right? Just remember that you made that choice and deep down, you know an ice cream sandwich is probably not as good for you as an apple, but there are going to be people who say, um, you shouldn't eat fruit because it has too much sugar. Yes, I And a lot, a lot of the people who say this are usually overweight. <laughs> like that's, a, that's what, you know, like I'm eating like cherries one time and someone's like, well, I can't eat cherries because it has too much sugar. And or like I, your mom, she right. asked you, which she and was I, trying to lose and, I, and I was like, you can eat a little bit of cherries, but then don't eat all the other stuff. <laughs> like, 
Like, don't well, need a ton of all that other well, stuff. Well, to, to be, like, yeah. really specific. Like, we can use your mom because, you know, she she's fair game for an example for mm -hmm. you. You know, she when she was trying to readjust her diet because her doctor said you can either take these pills or do exercise and, and change your diet. And you said, no, she's going to do that. We're not going to do, mm -hmm. you know, the pills, whatever. And she would call you every day like, can I eat this? And you're right. like... I can eat that, but you can't eat that. Right. Why? Because your goal is this, my goal is this. Right. You know, your goal is to lose weight and you have to get your blood work. You had a, a very specific goal. And so therefore you do have to be a little bit more strict. Right. But she like had, if you've she, already found where you're comfortable and at, then you're, you're maintaining. Mm -hmm. That's when you're maintaining mode. And I think it's a completely different thing than someone who's told like you're taking time bomb, you will have a heart attack in the next year if you don't change. Yeah, I think um, she would call and say, um, Cereal. Can or... I eat cereal or can I eat bread or can I eat rice? And the thing is, she got blood work showing her that she had certain food sensitivities yeah. and, and certain things like that were on there. And that was usually my response. I was able to be really strict with her because she's my mom, mom right? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm usually not able to like yell at clients this way, but um, the results spoke for themselves because she's lost like 30 pounds, right? Um, over the course and of, she didn't over have the course to take all those extra pills they take, told her she to. She was going to be on cholesterol, med, all these meds, and she's not on those meds. But... Um, she literally would call me and say, hey, um, so I was looking at um, this bread. Can I have this bread? And I said, no, you can't. And the reason I said no is not because bread is bad for her, but because that would just trigger a bunch. Like saying yes to that for where she was at would it's then the lead this. Yeah, it's the gateway. It's like, uh, yeah, it's basically like she was asking me if she could smoke weed. And, I'm, and the next thing I know, she's, you know, freebasing or something. I don't know. <laughs> so I was like, no, mom, no weed for you. But, but um, that doesn't mean a little bit of weed's bad. I'm, I'm just saying. Depends uh, on your goals. Depends on your goals. <laughs> and it depends on where you're at. So right. my response sometimes to her would be like, no, I can eat that. You just can't eat it. And she would, and she would kind of like She'd get a little bit having fun. But listen, she's, she's in better shape. She's lost weight. Yes, she's, yes. She's um, a healthier being. She's a healthier person. And she, it's not she that can she go up and down the stairs because she needs to. Yeah. And it's not that she hasn't slipped like as far as like eating bad, but she'll eat something pretty bad and then call me and say, I feel like crap because, not because of the guilt, but she literally feels bad, physically coughing right, because of, right. of these the things. Right, yeah. yeah. So. so you're like her, um, you're her sponsor, her, her food sponsor, food and exercise sponsor. Takes a village. Takes a village. <laughs> so, okay. I think we've gone in pretty good in depth about all the different things that we had talked about. And um, just to kind of sum up, you know, our 40 Fit Foo, the goal was you and I, uh, actually, no, this is how it came about. You guys, you and Jason were in Kung Fu class, and um, I literally you said, said, I'm too old for this shit. Yeah, and I'm like, don't let it hold you down. And then you I know? looked at Jason, and I was like, I need to, I need to talk to people about, like, call, something about doing Kung Fu at 40, like 40 Fu or 40, you know, and I, we were, I was just like, and he's a musical guy, and he started, like, making a theme song. Right then and there. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm waiting mm -hmm. for this theme song, by the way. Yeah, we need so, to call, um, we need Jason, to call, we're calling call you out. out. Yeah, our 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 live podcast needs its theme song, and I could have used it for this podcast. As and, well, then, so. and then, and um, then, that kind of just seed was planted in my head, and I kept bringing it up to you over and over. I was like, "There's something to this, um, where this is where we're at in our lives, and we have a certain level of experience and expertise in in this, and we might as well share it, right?" Shared and documented, and know that um, maybe we won't always be 100% correct, but we're trying things out and seeing how it works for us. Um, and as of right now, I think it's working out pretty well. Feel feel healthier than I've ever been. So. Yeah, and I mean, just uh, the, those listeners that haven't been following our little journey. I mean, even at my age, you know, I just hit some like milestone things. You know, things I didn't think I would be doing again, like. I haven't done gymnastics or tumbling in over 10 years easily. Mm -hmm. I had some injuries and also I was like, okay, leave it to the youngins now. You know, I had some stuff. And, you know, over the summer we had a little camp. I'm doing roundup back handsprings again. Right. Oscar's never done any tumbling. He's doing cartwheels and even roundoffs, which mm -hmm. is a big deal at our age, actually. And feeling really good. And feeling really, really good. good. And, you know, like uh, not being injured necessarily from it and just like being able to recover and kind of well, knowing your body. Getting a little twig, like we would get like a tweak here and there yeah. because we're doing things that maybe we weren't 100% prepared for, but then finding the right modality to recover as quickly as possible. 
Yeah, so we're kind of like guinea pigging and, and being like that <laughs> test subject for everybody so that we can also like, again, like you said, share experience. And what's been awesome is we've gotten some really cool feedback from our listeners and, and viewers. And so we want to just kind of shout out and thank you guys who have been watching and asking questions and encouraging us and also sharing your feedback and what you're going through because then we know like, hey, we're not alone. Right. This hurts or this is this is tough or yeah, it's, it's hard to wake up and have to do extra but you know kind of like we're all in it together because we are we're all right. growing together we're all aging together but doesn't mean we have to stop doing the things we love and I think that's the point it's like we want to be 40 and fit to do kung fu mm -hmm. or whatever that is you can fill that up out for you 40 fit blank whatever. you know whatever it is that you want to do it's totally attainable right so right. Um, the only thing is that I haven't found a way to will to will away um, hair growing like in my ears or my face you know that's just a that that you can't change you know what i mean <laughs> well that's what they invented like scissors and you buzzer can, and, and you know like um you can try to move better you are still going to get older though and you're going to look in the mirror yeah the hair and, is turning white yeah. okay I, right. it's there's definitely like, turning white there's specks that, of specks of white there's there's, there's wrinkles there's wrinkles there's um there, the skin's a, a, sometimes a little looser but the, th the thing is you still try to do the best you can to, to move, you know, to, to improve yourself as, as you're getting older and realize that um, we're all going to be like, we're all going to look like raisins eventually, right? We can't, <laughs> that's just what's going to happen. Just, just try to be a healthy raisin. Embrace that's it. All. Yeah, healthy raisins. <laughs> raisins in the sun. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think that that concludes our episode today on 40 Fit Foo, on, you know, keeping in shape with, you know, the culture of the fitness that you, you kind of um, deal with on a daily basis. So thanks, Oscar, for sharing with us. Thanks, Mimi. <laughs> Always a pleasure to have you on as oh, yes. my number one co-host slash right. guest. That's me. Number one with a bullet. <laughs> All right. Take care, guys. See ya. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for listening to Culture Chat and hope you enjoyed the conversation. Please subscribe and rate my podcast. Feel free to leave me suggestions or send an email to Mimi at culturechatpodcast.com or follow me on social media at Sifu Mimi Chan on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook.